have had. Can you in any way encapsulate what happens when you speak in tongues? Yeah, sure. So uh, Paul describes it in 1 Corinthians 14 as our spirit is praying, that we're speaking mysteries to God, that no one understands it, that we're edifying ourselves. And this way, edifying ourselves, we can now go and minister to others and help mm -hmm. others. So initially, there was a sense of something just kind of rising up mm -hmm. on the inside that was coming to my lips. So at, at first, January 24th, 72, okay, what do I do with this? So I, I began to speak words. Anyone could make words up. I go, blah, 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 blah. Anyone can make words up, right? Mm -hmm. But I began to feel, okay, something's actually, so the more I just began to speak, I realized my mind can be thinking, of meditating on this mm. verse, my mind can be thinking about, are others hearing me? Because mm. there's a little prayer meeting while these words are coming out. So it was something you can control in terms of stop mm. or start, but you were not manufacturing the words. So what happens now is I can say, okay, just like I'm speaking in English, mm. or I can say, okay, I'm gonna speak in Hebrew. Mm. I can say I'm gonna to begin to speak in tongues, but then something will well up. It's not words that I'm manufacturing mm. in my mind. I could be in my mind counting one, two, three, four, and praying in tongues. But as I do it, especially over a period of time, I, I begin to feel a, a sense of depth of communion with God. I begin to feel a... Okay, I'm going to stop it there. Uh, this is exactly why I speak against continuationism or sensationalism or any of those other false uh, um, doctrines that lead people to sin. And that's so prevalent in um, Pentecostal churches. Uh, now, here's the thing with tongues, and Dr. Brown is a heretic, and I don't say that to, uh, to, to rile up and, and, and cause distinction or anything like that. I, I do it because it's true, and what he teaches is false, and especially on terms with um, tongues. Now, he's taken 1 Corinthians 14, verse 2. He's taken that singular verse, that sole verse, and he's used it to basically encompass his, uh, his purpose for bringing forth the the false doctrine of of tongues and he uses that verse and that verse alone when he should be analyzing all of uh first corinthians 14 because paul does later on clear himself up now if we look at i'm going to be taking you through first corinthians 14 verses 6 through uh 16 uh, where there is no distinction and, it, and paul does clear himself up completely on what he means by tongues now, if we look at 1 Corinthians 14, verses 2, and this is the verse that Dr. Brown quote, quotes, um, For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men but to God, for no one understands him. However, in the spirit he speaks mysteries. Now, if we were just looking solely at that singular verse, what he says makes sense. Okay, but I'm going to take you to 1 Corinthians 14, verses 6, and I'm going to start there. But now, brethren, if I come to you speaking with tongues... What shall I profit you unless I speak to you either by revelation, by knowledge, by prophesying, or by teaching? Now, if we're using logic, we understand that these four points, revelation, knowledge, prophesying, or teaching, can only be understood if we're speaking actual languages. So we understand that it's important to be understood. Now, looking at 1 Corinthians 14, the next verse, verses 7, Even things without life, whether flute or harp, when they make a sound, unless they make a distinction in sounds, how will it be known what is piped or played? Now, there's a clear distinction or correlation, I'm sorry, correlation to Gideon's army when Gideon gave his men a trumpet. Okay, now if those men swapped those trumpets for flutes, when they blew the flute, it would cause confusion. Okay, because they wouldn't be able to understand uh, what was being played. So it's important to, again, understand okay if we look at verse 8 for if the trumpet makes an uncertain sound example if it were a fluid instead of a trumpet who would prepare for battle okay it would cause it would cause confusion now if we look at verse 9 so likewise you unless you utter by the tongue words easy to understand how will it be known what is spoken for you will be speaking into the air essentially you will be speaking things that are pointless things that cannot be understood Dr. Brown says he doesn't necessarily understand what's coming, but he can feel it coming from this from, from his chest all the way up. It sounds like that's demonic. It just sounds demonic. Uh, it's not biblical. Um, he speaks of not being able to control it, but being able to start and stop it as though it was something else leading him that he could interfere or 
have some type of influence over it, but he doesn't have full control over it, nor does he understand it. Uh, so let's look at verse 10. Therefore, I'm sorry, there are, it may be, so, ma so many kinds of languages in the world, and none of them is without significance. So they are important. The languages we speak are important because they bring forth understanding. Verse 11. Therefore, if I do not know the meaning of the language, I shall be a foreigner to him who speaks, and he who speaks will be a foreigner to me. Therefore, rendering any type of prophesying, uh, knowledge, teaching, or re revelation pointless. If we look at verse 12, even so you, since you are zealous for spiritual gifts, let it be for the edification of the church that you speak to excel. The edification of the church so that you speak to excel. So if Dr. Brown, as he said, he sits around with um, his, his fellow brothers and they speak these words that come forth from their mouth that they do not understand. The only person that he's edifying is himself. The only person that he's lifting up is himself because he looks as though he has a spiritual gift that no one else has. And um, and this is what a lot of these pastors in these Pentecostal churches, this is what they do. I remember when I was newly converted uh, the girl I was with at the time, she took me to a church that she was going to, which was a very large Pentecostal church here in Milwaukee. And I remember the pastor was preaching and all of a sudden in the middle of his preaching, he would stop and just tilt his head back and start uttering these utterances that no one could understand. And I remember him stopping after he did it and he would look at the congregation and people would stand up and just start clapping. And I didn't know what it was. I didn't know what he was doing, but I knew it was it wasn't of God. And I knew it was foolishness. And I knew it was simply there done to uplift him, to make him look as though he was this spiritual man of God who <clears throat> was, uh, was appointed to a position that was not for anyone else. And that he was to be praised for being given this position because we couldn't understand what he said. But people were praising, clapping as though he was some type of uh <clears throat> Messiah or something like he was something very special. Now, if we look at verse 13, therefore him, him who speaks in a tongue, pray that he may interpret. OK, pray that me, may, he may be understood or that he can understand what is being said. Verse 14, for if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. So that's talking directly to what Michael Brown is saying. Um, Dr. Brown is saying that he speaks in a tongue, okay, that cannot be understood, and therefore it's rendered unfruitful. Now, if we look at verse 15, Paul says, what is the conclusion then? I will pray with the spirit, and I will also pray with the understanding. I will sing with the spirit, and I will also sing with the understanding. So, again, he's coming back to the understanding, understanding, and he clears it up. Um, in conclusion of verse 16, otherwise, if you bless with the spirit, how will he who occupies the place of the uninformed say amen at your giving of thanks, since he does not understand what you say? So basically, how can I say amen if I don't understand what you're saying? So in conclusion, Dr. Brown, again, went all the way back to verse two. OK, and he used that for his sole purpose as to why <clears throat> what he does is OK. And that's wrong. And it's not just wrong, it's demonic. OK, because. He, he, here's what I always come back to with people like Dr. Brown. What is the point? OK, why are you doing this? Why is that important to you? And I'll just I'll come out right out and say it. The man is lost. OK, very fleshly. This is very fleshly what he's doing. It's um, it's it's not for God. It can't be for God. OK, <clears throat> it's not for the people of God. The people of God can't understand what he's saying, nor can he understand it. So, again, I come back to what is the point? Why are you doing this? Why is it? Why is it important to you? OK, uh, it's just purely demonic because there's no point to it. Words are coming out of his mouth that make no sense. It's gibberish. It's foolishness. And I don't think he can answer that question. So it comes back to you are seeking your own glory. You're not seeking God's glory because you're not preaching or ministering anything that's of any type of prophetic nature. It cannot be understood. What are you talking about? So that's pretty much all I have to say. Uh, I hope I've cleared up. 
um, Paul's teaching. Okay, and uh, that's kind of stupid just to stick with First Corinthians fourteen verse two. Um, this is why it's under, it's important to understand things and to um, break it down so context is understood because that's not what he did here. So thank you for listening.